morning from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing where today I'm going to have a go at making a sweet and sticky chocolate beer. Key ingredients in today's brew will be 150 grams of crushed roasted barley from Ballyhoo, a kilo of local chocolate malt from the malt miller, some of my flavour drops uh, chocolate peanut butter flavouring, a jar of Tesco honey and of course the all-important spring water which I use because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine. -y. So to begin with I've weighed out what's turned out to be 154 grams of the crushed roasted barley and I'm going to add that into my small pan just here and my crisp local chocolate malt goes into the big pan I'm then going to add into my pans spring water and I'm going to top them both up. Next with both of my pots I'm just going to give them a nice stir around to make sure that there's nothing stuck on the bottom and the water and the grain have mixed together. Now what I want to do is to bring the heat up very gradually so that all the flavours and the sugars are released from the grains. So this is going to take quite a while. I'm going to do this with the lids off because I don't want to get any sulfidey uh, smells or tastes with my beer and if you boil it with the lid on that's what happens. Okay the story so far, these two were on the hob for 90 minutes. I basically let them warm through really really slowly until it got to this point of simmering and then when they began to simmer I've taken the heat off and I've now left them for two hours to cool down again and now I'm going to bring them to a boil where I'm going to let them boil for 45 minutes. So the boil's over, unfortunately I had a little bit of a mess there but never mind these things happen. Now I'm going to pour into the demijohn through a sieve. So it's a real inky black liquid. And then this is just the pan with the small amount, the 150 grams of the roasted barley in. So if you look, there's the grain. I just press it with a spoon. I'm not going to squeeze it too hard because I will get a sediment from it. Now the big messy pan. Again it's inky black stuff. And once again I'm pressing it with a spoon to get all the liquid out and into the demijohn. So my demijohn is nearly full. I want to now add in some honey, which I'm just going to pour into the funnel and that will melt as it goes inside the liquid. Okay, the demijohn is full and I wanted to leave it to cool down for a couple of hours because it's too hot to add the yeast at the minute. So I'm now left with uh, an unenviable cleaning job to do. So the beer is about 40 minutes away from being at a good temperature to add the yeast. So I'm going to activate my yeast now. So all I've got here is some spring water that I've just warmed up to kind of like body temperature in the microwave. I'm going to add a half a teaspoonful of champagne, sparkling wine and cider yeast just to get it going because this activates quickly. But then I'm going to add approximately a quarter of what's in here. This is bubblegum yeast. This gives it a good sweet flavour. Now I'm just going to leave my yeast to sort of come alive and begin to activate. So I'm taking some of this liquid now, the wort as it's called, and putting it in my hydrometer tube. I need to take the gravity of the wort at about 20 degrees. And at the minute it's too warm, it's 34, so I need to wait a while for this to cool down. While I'm waiting for the wort to cool, I'm going to add the initial chocolate flavour to this. 
and this is my protein uh, chocolate flavour drops. It's chocolate and peanut butter flavour actually, but the chocolate comes through more. And I'm simply going to add two pipettes. And then when I've bottled this, I'll add some drops into the bottles also. So this is strong stuff, you don't need to put any more than that in. I've cooled the beer wort down in a jug of cold water. I'm now just under 20, so this is fine now for taking the gravity. So I'm going to take the original gravity now, and that will help me in the end to determine what the alcohol percentage of this is. And that is an original gravity of 1.070, 1070. You'll notice I've not left a lot of room between here and the top. And when I add the yeast, it will uh, activate and form a Krausen, which is the big foamy head, and it will all spill out of the top. So I'm going to use something called a blow-off tube, um, because I want to get as much beer as possible as I can out of this demijohn. So I'm going to pop the yeast in now. So here's the chocolate beer in the demijohn with the blow-off pipe which you can see goes into the bottle here which has got water in. So this will form a big Krausen, it will spew up and it will go in here and when that's settled down after two or three days then I'll just put a normal airlock in like I've got in my other brews just here. So back again the next morning, we've clearly got CO2 coming through, you can see some more liquid that's been pushed up with the Krausen and there's a steady stream of bubbles coming up. Afternoon from the kitchen again folks. Today it's clearing day for my chocolate beer. And when I say clearing day, I'm not sure how successful that will be with it being so dark. But what I want to do is separate it from the sediment at the bottom. And I'm going to add some finings and see if that does make any difference. I am quite doubtful. And as you'll see from the airlock, there is now nothing happening. This has just been a couple of weeks in the demijohn and it's stopped fermenting. So it's bung out. And siphoning tube in. So now the fun bit. And that is thick. That is some extremely thick beer. Looks like tar. I'm using clear it wine findings from Young's. It's a two step process. Bottle A leave it an hour, then bottle B. So I'm going to do bottle A to start with, and I'm simply going to add bottle A into here. That was the equivalent of a teaspoon or thereabouts. One of these bottles does five gallons. And there we go, the bubbles in the pipe indicate the siphoning is over. So I've just got to give this a little mix. Make sure the findings are all in there, mixed in. Okay, I'm going to leave this now for an hour and I'll come back to it in an hour's time to add findings B. Findings A has been in the beer for an hour now, so it's time to pour this back into the initial demijohn with some findings B. So in it goes. Very thick stuff. So I've poured about nearly half of it in. I'm now going to add finings B, the remainder of what's in this bottle. And I want to continue to add the rest of the wort, or the beer as it is now. It smells very coffee actually. So I suspect I've made a porter, but it was all a big experiment. I didn't really know what I was doing. Okay, I'm going to pop the bung back in. So the bung's back in, give it a little agitation. I'm now just going to leave this for a few days and see what happens. Hopefully um, they'll, I'll see a buildup of sediment at the bottom. Um, but I'll be bottling this probably at some point this week, so I shall be back shortly.
Hey folks from the kitchen, it's chocolate beer bottling day. So the story so far, it's had uh, finings in it now for four days. Everything seems to have settled. I've had to draw a chalk mark where the sediment is. It's really sedimenty. So everything below that is where the sediment is and that's just for my guidance when I put the siphoning tube in. So I've got my bottles cleaned and sterilised. I'll probably get four 750ml bottles, but if I'm lucky I'll get five. I've got my um, hydrometer flask, I've got my carbonation drops, I've got my plastic bungs softening in hot water and my cage is resin. Before I begin siphoning, I'm going to add carbonation drops into these bottles. That's a double one. Uh, it's three per 750ml bottle. I'm just going to do four bottles to start with. So I'll separate the other two bottles away just in case I don't need to use them. Then I'm going to add into each bottle an entire pipette of the my protein flavor drop. So one pipette is 15 drops. So I've got my flavor drops there and that goes in. I'm gonna take another. And then it's bung out of the demijohn. I've got the very tricky job of getting the siphoning tube above the sediment so I can see the tube. So I'm gonna to have to do some uh, guesstimation using the clip that's on the siphoning tube which is next to my wrist just there. So now the fun bit. I got an essence of chocolate then when that came through. Promising. Very, very thick, black, tar, gloopy. It looks like crude oil, but if it tastes chocolatey, I'll be happy. Well, that wasn't a bad guess. It's slightly above it. I think I'm just going to cut my losses and leave it at that. So you can see that I've, I've just gone slightly above the chalk line, but that wasn't really a bad guess at all. So I think I'm just going to sacrifice that bit there. So I've got my hydrometer tube ready. In we go. That is a final gravity of 1.030. It's higher than I anticipated it would be. So let's work out the final alcohol percentage. So I take the first original gravity of 1.070 I minus the final gravity of 1.030 which equals 0.04 and I multiply this figure by 131.25 and this gives me a final alcohol percentage of 5.25% which to be fair is not bad so it's over 5 and I'm happy enough about that but uh, yeah I was expecting it to be a little bit stronger I must admit so now I've got to fit the bungs in my bottles. So I've just removed them from the hot water, shake off the drips, and in they go. One, two, three, and four. They need cages, and the cages will prevent any missile accidents. So when the secondary fermentation builds up in these bottles, which gives it the fizz, the pressure increases as it makes CO2 and you can end up with bung rockets, unless they're secured in place with these bad boys. Now very gently, so I don't get the water everywhere, I just need to rinse the bottles to get any of the sticky residue off. Because believe you me, that stuff is very sticky. Okay, so I just need these to dry now and then I'll have the labels. So that's bottles labelled and dry. And I now need to put these away somewhere warm for about a month. So my next film will be in about a month's time when it comes to the tasting. Looking forward. Cheers, folks. Hey, folks, it's chocolate porter opening and tasting day. Quite excited about this one, but also nervous because I never know whether I'm going to get a bottle bomb or whether I'm going to get flat as a pancake. Only time will tell. 
but uh, I've had mixed experiences so far you could say. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, little pop, that was okay. Got a little bit of sort of steaminess coming out. Trusted 1993 Barnsley Beer Festival tankard. Let's have a look how it pours. Hmm, I'm not seeing much in the way ahead. It's fizzy. Although it, it does pour like a lot of craft porters that you buy. I said craft, not crap. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a little head. I'm, come on, we can give it some credit. So it looks okay. Smells really good. Let's see how it tastes. It's sweet. Sparkles on your tongue, definitely. The smokiness of the grain is definitely an overriding taste. The chocolatiness is not huge, but it's there. If you'd given me this and asked me to guess, I would have said it's some sort of sweet porter, but I want to know exactly what the sweetness was. So I think some of the sweetness is possibly um, from the carbonation drops, uh, and some of it's certainly from the flavour drops. It's decent, it's fine, it's very drinkable. Put it this way, I've paid for porters that have tasted a lot worse than this. So, in my eyes, it's a success. So cheers folks, I'm going to enjoy this today. Cheers. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Travel Media production and you can find more like them by going to www.mosstravel.tv Thank you so much for supporting my YouTube channel and watching my film, it's hugely appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss. Hit the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you hit the bell, then you'll also get notifications about any future travel films which I upload. If you like my travel films, then you might also like my second channel, which is about home and garden. Uh, please uh, have a look for that channel. You'll find it at www mosshomeandgarden.co.uk and if you like what you see please give that a subscribe also. If you'd like to connect with me as Moss Travel Media on other social media then you'll find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Moss Travel that's the page and if you'd like to connect with the profile then the profile is Moss Travelog. If you'd like to connect with me on Instagram to see my travel photography, where I'm up to, what stories I'm telling, then go to instagram.com forward slash stewmoss or do a search for user stewmoss. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, I'm at Moss Travel TV. On Pinterest, I'm Moss Travel Media, which is pinterest.co.uk forward slash Moss Travel TV. On Tumblr, I'm stuartmoss.tumblr.com or just do a search for Moss Travel Tumblr. On WordPress, I'm wordpress.com forward slash view forward slash Moss Travel TV dot wordpress.com or do a search for Moss Travel Media on WordPress. And on vcontactor you can find me by going to vk.com forward slash Moss Travel Media or doing a search for Stuart Moss. If you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue please just email me on mosstraveltv at gmail.com and once again, thank you for watching and for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. I wish you all the best of days, happy travels and bon voyage.